Today we have more information about what used to be called Project Digits by NVIDIA. Now it's called NVIDIA DGX Spark. The most important bit about this small supercomputer on your desk, which is to be used for LLMs, is the memory bandwidth. Let's have a look. It uses a new GPU with a Blackwell architecture, and it has 128 GB of LPDDR5X of unified system memory. With a 256-bit memory interface, we get to a total memory bandwidth of 273 GB per second. The system is supposed to cost around 3,000 US dollars and will be available soon from select partners of NVIDIA. This is roughly what's in it. There's an SSD there, there is high-speed networking there, ConnectX by NVIDIA. There's also the GB10 superchip with uh, one petaflot of floating point 4 AI compute. Please note this is floating point 4. So if you are comparing this with floating point 16, for example, you have to divide by a multiplier, which may or may not be 4. Also, another important question is whether this is dense or sparse compute. And it includes a Grace CPU with 20 ARM cores. Please note, this is not the same as NVIDIA is using in the supercomputers or the data center series. They have a very different ARM cores inside there and also two GPU cores, whereas I believe in this GB10 superchip, we have one GPU core, typically. Now, I'm not so excited about this system as I am about the DGX station, because if you look at these performance figures of the DGX station here, uh, it's got eight terabytes per second of memory bandwidth, because it actually uses high bandwidth memory, HBM3E, the same type which is used in the data centers and sporting up to 288 gigabytes of HBM3E and up to 496 gigabytes of LPDDR5X with up to 396 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth, which probably can be shared over this NVLink, which uh, is chip to chip, uh, which connects the uh, GPU and the CPU cores in this architecture. Um, we will get a much higher performance on this G DGX station. Before we get into how the DGX station looks like and where you will be able to buy one, I would like to briefly uh, delve into why RAM bandwidth matters. We have uh, this chart, this spreadsheet of data, which uh, I have compiled from a website by Puget Systems. And we're going to go into the data they have in here. We're going to briefly go through this page. So basically, CPU or GPU performance for large language models can be split into two phases. First phase is the prompt processing, where it takes your prompt and processes it so the system can start generating an answer. This prompt processing, depending on the GPU you've got, um, gives you different tokens per second uh, processing. So imagine if you use a GeForce GTX 1080, then in, you put in a prompt, like let's say uh, several pages, Dina 4 pages or something, it will take a couple of seconds to process it. Now keep in mind, this is on 5.3 Mini, which in itself is a quite small model by Microsoft. Here we have it. It's a 3.8 billion parameters model. Now, the bigger your model gets, the lower the performance gets on tokens per second. I will show you that in a different graph in a second. But basically, if you contrast this difference between the 511 um, tokens per second for prompt processing to the 10,324 tokens per second, uh, which you have, that's a massive difference. That's a 20-fold difference right there. Now, if you... Uh, go on. Okay, you have like different performance figures like teraflops and floating point 16, tensor core count and the tensor core generation. And then you have the token generation itself. So here in the tokens, we go from all the way from 23 to 225. Again, the GeForce GTX 10,080 Ti is the slowest one, but this is not a 20 fold difference. It's actually less than a 10 fold difference. And now, um, the important bit here 
for the token generation is actually the memory bandwidth. So we have a uh, very high bandwidth on the 4019. Note this is in gigabytes per second. So we have 1008.4 gigabytes per second on this GPU, which is a previous generation GPU because Blackwell is a uh, 5000 uh, RTX 5000 series. Um, but the problem is that I only got um, the right memory bandwidth to compare the 273 gigabytes per second we have on DGX Spark, formerly known as Project Digits, if we compare it to the RTX 4060 Ti, for example, which has 288 gigabytes per second. Because all RTX 5.0 series, which are currently released, have massively more memory bandwidth. So, for example, the RTX 5070 has 672 gigabytes per second. So we couldn't compare actually generation to generation. If you look at this table and this chart here, and I've highlighted a couple of things in yellow here. So we have the RTX 4080 Super compared with the RTX 3080 Ti. Both of them have 320 tensor cores, although these are third generation and these are fourth generation tensor cores. Now the 3080 Ti has 912.4 gigabyte per second of memory bandwidth. Whereas the 4080 Super has 736.3 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. And if you compare the tokens, yes, it's not that much of a difference, but you see, even though these are older generation core, tensor cores, we get three tokens per second more out of the RTX 3080 Ti. So memory bandwidth is really what matters. And if we compare again, like the RTX 4060 Ti at 288, which roughly is similar to this project digits or DG, DGX Spark, which we have right here. So it's right between the RTX 4060 and RTX 4060 Ti with the memory bandwidth. We get to the conclusion that we have a rather slow machine, especially if you consider that it has got massive memory compared to the 4060 Ti, you can go up to 100. 28 gigabytes of RPDDR5X on this. We will have a machine which can handle big LLMs, but slowly. Now let's have a look at this chart in order to illustrate this further. So here we have something like the M2 Ultra 76, 919, 2 gigabytes. And again, Keep in mind, the Mac Studios it's, uh, with the M2 Ultra is it's around 800. Um, I've done a separate video on the M3 Ultra and my predictions for how many tokens per second we can expect. But um, the LDR uh, memory bandwidth is about the same on M2 Ultra and M3 Ultra for the Mac Studio. So this is kind of like a much higher, going to be much higher performance, the Mac compared to the DGX um, machine, DGX Spark from NVIDIA. If we compare an RTX 3060, well, here we have RTX 3060 of gigabyte. And here we have a dual RTX 3060 with 12 gigabyte. That should be about the upper uh, limit or what is to be expected by projects, project uh, digits or DGX Spark. So note the lower we go here, uh, or the higher we go with the model size, the lower we go with uh, speed on tokens per second. And this is an overestimation as well, because the RTX 3060 has 360 gigabytes of um, per second of memory speed. Now keep in mind, of course, the DJX Spark has a different um, architecture. It's Blackwell architecture, which is much more modern, more efficient, more power efficient, uh, specifically. But again, the memory bandwidth means that we will not be able to run big models with very high tokens per second. Now let's have a look at the DGX station, which is something I'm really excited about because it means these are going to be AI supercomputers, but in a desktop format. And they are going to be available from different partners. 
So they're going to use this NVIDIA Grace Blackwell Ultra desktop superchip. They will have very high bandwidth networking options. So uh, you will have to up to 800 gigabits per second networking options. So in essence, you would be able to cluster several of these together. Then you have the huge memory, which we discussed, and it is high bandwidth memory. So HBM3E with eight terabytes per second bandwidth. This is a game changer. This is a true game changer for running large language models and actually running large language models with decent performance on the edge. How expensive will this be? My best guess is these are $30,000 plus type machines. 10,000 to 50,000 is something I would feel very confident in predicting. We will see in a bit. These machines will be available from ASUS, Box, Dell, HP, Lambda, and Supermicro. Again, uh, there's a way for us to predict the performance of a DGX station by looking at the data center bit. So keep in mind, this is HBM free, high bandwidth memory free E with eight terabytes per second of bandwidth. And we have one NVIDIA Blackwell Ultra GPU. If we look at the, the data center offering, the HTX B200, it has eight Blackwell GPUs and a total memory bandwidth of up to 62 terabytes per second. If we look down here for the individual Blackwell GPU specification, that seems about right. So we have 7.7 .7 terabytes per second per um, GPU. And then if we look at this spec here, we see that one NVIDIA B200 GPU is able to generate up to 10,756 tokens per second for Llama 270 billion. Now let's naively divide this number by 10. So we would be able to go up to 1,000 tokens per second on one DJX station. This machine is a beast. It will be able to handle really big LLMs in real time, which you throw at them, and serve them up in your enterprise, because this is an enterprise-grade workstation. This is what NVIDIA is throwing at companies which have a lot of money and which want to stay competitive. This is Jensen Huang presenting this device, which looks a lot like a normal computer motherboard, except it isn't. Another important bit here, uh, we have a GB300 super chip with 784 gigabytes of unified system memory. Although we've seen that part of it, as per the specs, will be HBM3E memory and part of it will be LPDDR memory. And we have a massive amount of AI compute power in here and connect X8 uh, SuperNIC um, networking. And just just in case, some PCI Ex Express slides for your uh, GeForce. Your uh, GeForce. Okay, so so this uh, is called DJX Station. DJX Spark and DJX Station are going to be available by all of the OEMs. HP, Dell, Lenovo, Asus. Uh, it's going to be manufactured uh, for data scientists and researchers all over the world. This is the computer of the age of AI. This is what computer... Computer of the age of AI. And this is how um, Jensen Huang sees the lineup. All the way from the DJX Spark, again, which used to be called Project Digits with one petaflops. Again, please keep in mind, these are a floating point for uh, petaflops, so kind of marketing terminology there. Going up to uh, through the RTX Pro workstation with uh, several um, GPUs built in through the DGX station, which kind of maybe also puts a price on this. There's $3,000. This is north of $6,000. And then somewhere between ten and fifty thousand dollars, I assume, with twenty petaflops. So massive jump from here to there, and with actually high bandwidth memory, lots of bandwidth, high performance. 
to the RTX Pro Enterprise server, the DGX B200, uh, which we just saw in the datasheet, and then the DGX GB300, which is a combination of uh, these GX uh, offerings with 15 exaflops. So there you have it. Uh, that's the first look at uh, DGX Spark, DGX Station. More videos to come. Comment below what you would like me to create a video on specifically, what you're most interested in. And I will hopefully have more news about pricing and actual tokens per second performance uh, soon. And by the way, there is apparently a way to register on the NVIDIA website to be notified about DJX Spark uh, and DJX Station uh, as well, or to join a kind of waiting list. When I discover how to do that, I'll also drop a comment in this video. Have a good one, and thanks for watching. Do subscribe to my channel if this was good for you.